you for tuning in again tonight. tonight we have something really good, a hot topic in the news this but week. has been charged with crime. This is a show where I try to educate real, real stories. Thank you for watching Truth and Justice with Vivian King. Thanks for tuning in. I have an, another exciting show planned for you tonight. I have a local defense lawyer by the name of Mr. Wilvin Carter here tonight, and he's going to help me in the discussion about a new crime called illegal photography, and or, or called improper photography. And uh, it's an interesting uh, scenario because people are being charged now with improperly taking videos or photographs of people and uh, it, it, I guess it ends up on YouTube or the internet and uh, it's a crime. It's actually a felony offense in which people go to prison for. So I want my viewers to know about this crime and to know not what's legal and what's not legal in terms of photography. All right, so let me just get started. Uh, Wilvin, please introduce yourself to my viewers. Tell them who you are and how long you've been practicing law. Um, hi, Ms. King viewers. I'm Wilvin Carter. I've been practicing law in private practice since 2007. I was a former prosecutor with the Fort Bend District Attorney's Office. Um, I was there for three years, and subsequent my stay there, I decided to go into private practice, and that's where I've been since. So what made you move to Houston? Law school, weather, women. Uh -huh. Where are stuff. you from? From Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. All right, that's great. And where did you go to undergrad school? I went to a small liberal arts college in Kentucky by the name of Berea College. Oh, I've yep. never heard of that. Yep, up All in right. the Appalachian Mountain. Okay. I've heard the Appalachian Mountains are beautiful. They are. Extremely, especially in the wintertime where you have the snow and all that coming off the trees. Pretty good place. Well, let's, uh, it, it, let's educate the viewers tonight about improper photography and visual recording. Remember, uh, after about a, our 15 minutes of our discussion, please call in and give us your opinion about this law. And uh, we're, Wilbur and I are going to tell you about a couple of cases. He's going to tell you about a couple of cases he had, he's had. I've, I have one case pending, and I'll just read to you what the uh, indictment says. It says that uh, in the name and by the authority of the state of Texas, the duly organized grand jury of Harris County, Texas, presents in the district court of Harris County, Texas, that in Harris County, Texas, the defendant, heretofore on or about October 8, 2012, did then and there unlawfully with intent to arouse and gratify the sexual des desire of the defendant record by electronic means a visual image of another person, namely the complainant, I'm not going to say her name, at a location other than a bathroom or private dressing room without the consent of the complainant. So this is a state jail felony punishable by up to uh, what, 180 days to two years in the state jail facility and that is a day for day facility and it is up to a ten thousand dollar fine so let's uh, let's just get started with this I uh, want Wilvin to talk to you about that now Wilvin you said you've had you've seen a few of these cases in the courthouse is that correct um, I've, I have two or I should say I've had one um, it was similar to yours it was an actual photography case and the one that I have now is a video recording case. Let's talk about the uh, photography case. Tell me what the facts were in that case. Uh, relatively simple. What, what took place, my client, um, he was going to grocery stores, um, Walmarts, things of that nature. Uh, the allegations were that he was, he was sliding cameras up under the aisles and taking pictures of ladies. Um, 
private areas. So tell me how that would happen. So I'm walking down an aisle at Walmart looking for some items, and how would he get up under my dress? Well, l let's say you're walking down the aisle in Kroger's, you're at the um, cereal aisle, and you're trying to reach, I don't know, you probably eat what, the, the cinnamon toast crunch or whatnot, <laughs> and while you're standing there and you're reaching up to uh, obtain the cereal, he or someone that who, who was with him would slide the camera up under the aisle or through or through the bottom part of the um, the rows, and the camera would be placed up under your dress, and they would take pictures of uh, your private area. So they had an actual camera, or was it a cell phone? Well, in, in this particular case, the allegations, uh, it was a cell phone, but once they executed, when I say they, the law enforcement agencies, they executed search warrants, and they found um, both cell phone <coughs> pictures and um, photographs taken from cameras. Oh, so they actually, so what made, what made law enforcement get onto this case? On, I think on this, in, initially what happened was my client, he, he was, my client was um, in the store and someone saw him and then it was reported to security and then at that point in time that's when security came over questioned him and he was detained and then subsequently arrested for that oh so he was actually arrested uh, like right when it happened yes and they arrested him but then after that that wasn't enough then they executed a search warrant at his house well what ended up happening um, if I remember correctly when they took him into the station they questioned him he waived his rights spoke with the um, law enforcement agent and based upon what he told them uh, they found that there was at least they was hoping there was probable cause the judge found that was probable cause for them to um, have a search warrant created it was subsequently executed and that's when they found the other materials and when they found the other materials what happened after that um, they actually did not charge him with with the um, additional photographs that they found. They just used it, um, what we call, for extraneous purposes. All right. And how was your client's attitude about it? Did he want to go to trial? I mean, what, tell me what his position was. It, it was interesting. Um, he initially started off saying that um, he wanted to plead, get probation. Uh, but once we started looking into the case, because it was relatively new at the time, or it, it was new to me. Yeah, the law is new. Yeah, and so what happened was uh, it was the public place that was sticking uh, in both our minds. And he being the type of person that he was, he went and did some research, mm -hmm. and he misinterpreted the law and he thought that because they were in this grocery store, which is a public place, he thought it was okay for him to actually take the pictures of these ladies or, or you know, put the cameras up under their dresses and then take the pictures. So because a grocery store is a public place that invites anybody in, he thought that it was okay to take their picture in public? Absolutely. So tell me how you weighed it through what's legal and what's not legal. What initially happened... Um, and, and, and I'm going to be honest, I'm going to credit him for the initial legwork. Um, he, in, in an attempt to prove his innocence, he went and did some research. He brought back some uh, legislative history about the law. And I actually looked at it. Um, he, he also found a, um, a brief that someone had wrote about this particular law in San Antonio, I'm sorry, San Antonio or Austin. Mm -hmm. And I read it and I gained an understanding for the law and the um, legislative intent and purpose behind the law. Do you remember it? The what? Legislative intent and purpose. Yes. Um, it, it actually was geared to protect individuals from these particular crimes. Um, I mean, had people gone to our state legislature and complained to our Congress people that we need protection? Or do you remember if there were any hearings like that? Or why did our legislators think that we needed this law? It, it was, I don't remember exactly why or what prompted the, uh, the hearings um, on this particular issue, mm -hmm. but 
it was, the basis was that there were some people that were charged in a different county, in a smaller county, and I think that's what prompted it. And once it was brought to the legislature's attention, that's when this law was written. So basically someone had taken a picture of someone in public and they would end up, they were prosecuted for that particular case or that uh, crime at the time. And it may have even been appealed by that person's defense counsel. But what was learned was through the legislative intent was that when they said public place, they were specifically talking about if a person is at a beach, if you're at a beach um, and you have on a bikini and you're walking around the beach and if I have a camera and I want to take a picture of you, well, it was okay for me to take a picture of you because you're in a public place, you're wearing a bikini and it's safe to assume that your expectation of privacy has been waived because you're walking around in the bikini. Uh, but it was not created to protect a person who was fully clothed, uh, whether it was skirts or dress, because they're saying they have an expectation of privacy not to have someone looking at their private areas, their posterior areas, or their bosom uh, while they're out shopping. So that was pretty much uh, what I learned from that, that when they talk about public place, the, the, the legislator made a distinction uh, between those two places. Okay, that makes sense. So if I have on a bikini, even walking around a store, uh, you can see my cleavage, you can see, you know, bottom, you can see a lot of things, so I wouldn't have an expectation of privacy there. Correct. But if I have a dress on, like I have on tonight, then I should be able to expect that my privates are going to be covered up and that nobody should be looking at it and putting it on the Internet. Right. Your <laughs> privates should be protected. Should be protected. Okay. <laughs> All right. So... What do you think society should do? So what happened to your client in that case? What type of punishment between 180 days and two years or probation? What happened to him? Um, my, my client and I, once I read the law and the uh, legislative intent, he and I disagreed about how we should um, go forward on that particular case. And, uh, you know, I withdrew from the case and he obtained counsel from someone else. And he ended up... Um, he ended up getting jail time for that. How much jail time did he get? That I don't remember. Wow. So did he have priors? Do you remember if he had priors? He did not have any priors. Wow. So that's pretty harsh punishment for putting um, for that, don't you think? Uh, or I, do you think that's appropriate? Well, I don't, I don't know what happened or what transpired after I uh, withdrew as his counsel. Uh, what I do know is that once, while I was his, while I was his attorney, uh, the offer was probation. So he, he did have a probation offer on the table, uh -huh. but he was adamant that he was correct on the law and that the state was prosecuting him uh, uh, and it was malicious and prosecutorial misconduct for them to prosecute him in the manner in which they were. Uh -huh. And that's why we decided to part ways and whatever happened with his uh, second attorney, I don't know, but what I do know is he ended up going to jail for that. Did you ever find out what his mindset was? Why would he want to take pictures of somebody under their dress? <laughs> he never, I tried. I mean, was it a fetish or was he going to post it on the internet or YouTube? I mean, what was his issue with trying to secretly go under women's dresses? I, I don't know. I tried to, um, to find out why he was doing that, uh -huh. just, just for my own curiosity uh -huh. but he I never got an answer from him and you know I didn't I didn't take him to be a pedophile or anything of that nature because these were adult women okay um, he would he was not taking pictures or photographs of um, kids or or anything of that nature so I don't know let's talk about another interesting part of that case and that you said that your client waived his rights when he talked to police officers one of the challenges I've always had as a lawyer is People will ch waive their rights, which means that the police officer has you in custody, which means you are not free to leave, and an officer reads your Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right um, to obtain a lawyer, because anything you say can, be u can and will be used against you in the court of law. And in Texas, it has to be recorded. Uh, it actually has to be recorded before it's presented in court. Uh, under Texas state law. So it's always interesting to me when uh, someone hires me and they say, Miss King, I told them what happened. So, you know, as lawyers, we always get the discovery, which will be the tape. We listen to it. 
And then, you know, I'll say, well, how can we go to trial and plead not guilty if you talked about it with the officer? Why didn't you exercise your right to remain silent? And most people say, well, I was scared, or they told me that they would take my children from me or my girlfriend's children, and I was scared, but I thought you could undo it. How do you, how do you, how do you deal with that type of scenario? Uh, that's, that's one of the <laughs> most frustrating um, issues that we have to deal with. I, I know that I have to deal with, I know with speaking with you, that you have to deal with these issues. Uh, I look for, to make sure that the officers comply with the state statute, that's first and foremost. And after that, you know, I, I see if there's any type of wiggle room in which we can get the uh, statement suppressed. And well, 99% of the time you cannot get the statement suppressed. 99% of the time you cannot. So, uh, me being the uh, strategist, that, like I learned from you and others, uh, I figure out a way how I can make the jury sympathetic towards my client. And if they feel like my client gave a statement, under duress, or if they were coerced, or if they felt like <laughs> their rights had been violated. I've had uh, on numerous occasions where the jurors would just totally disregard the statement, and, you know, we've come out successful and victorious um, in those situations. Yeah, that, that, that's a good thing, and I'm proud of you for uh, being able to get around that. In a case like this, it's kind of similar to child pornography. This statute is under the kind of Pornography obscenity statutes, um, isn't it? In that, what's chapter 21 of the penal code? Do you have that with you? Is because the, the penal code section it's is under 20, sexual offenses. Yeah, it's under sexual offenses, so it's called a sexual offense, and um, I don't believe it's a, it's something that you have to register as a sex offender for. No, at not at this time. But keep in mind that our legislators change the law every session. They're in session now, so it could be a registered crime effective September 1st, for all we know at this time, because they could be changing it. Um, let's talk about the other scenario that you had. This is a probably more one of the interesting cases um, that I have to date. Um, we have uh, a client that, have, that came in. He met up via social media with his um, ex-girlfriend, well, I shouldn't say ex-girlfriend, a young lady that he was having relations with, sexual relations with. Uh, they were trying to rekindle an old flame and fling, and she allegedly told him that she um, was dating someone or was, was about to be engaged to someone, and but they kept flirting back and forth, uh, giving different sexual, um, I should say, opinions and, 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 and ideas to one another. And the allegation or came up where she and he were talking about a past video that the two have made, or they made together. But it's a sexual video, right? Sexual video. She said that she wanted to see it because she enjoyed looking at those type of videos. Um, but then once she thought about what she was saying and asking for, um, she denied that she hadn't known about the video being made. And then she thought about the consequences of that video being distributed to her and her fiance finding out and at that point in time, she made a claim um, to law enforcement that he, my client, had taped a video of them having sex without her consent. Wow. So she actually reported him to the police. She reported him. So that's another different scenario. You can usually, most of the time, women cry rape, even date rape, right. when they get angry with someone. But this time, in an effort to get a tape back that she consensually made, she tells law enforcement that it was made without her consent? Absolutely. And they believed her? Of course, it's Harris County. Uh, so, y you know, y nine times out of ten, if someone makes a complaint here, um, it it's not that difficult to get law enforcement to uh, file charges, and it's definitely not that difficult to get an indictment here in Harris County. So that's what ended up happening. Um, so where we are now, you know, there are mitigating factors that are, that, that will 
be favorable to us because in order for her to say that she was, she did not consent, she didn't know about it, well, the problem is there are other videos that she says she knows about. There are videos to my, uh, based on what my investigator found out, that she sent my client and... How did y'all find that out? I, I have a good investigator. But I'm just wondering, would she have deleted it on her phone? Did he find it on his phone or via email or... Well, yeah. I mean, it has to still be through some type of social medium. Well, he, my client, told us about the videos and um, the pictures and we just had the phone, I guess, encrypted and someone went through the phone and... His phone. And found, yeah, and found that stuff. Yeah. And it's wow. also some stuff that was sent, um, if I recall, um, on social media as well. Wow. So has ha have you presented that to the prosecution yet? No. Or well, that, we talked that about be a surprise? it. No, no, no. We talked I'm about trying. it. Um, I we talk about it. I didn't. I don't. I don't typically like to uh, surprise prosecutors. I try to get things handled up front, if, especially if I know the prosecutor is a good guy, and this prosecutor is a good guy, and he and I talked about it, and so we're now um, just in the negotiation stage, just trying to figure out how we want to handle the case and move forward with it. Well, that's good. That sounds like that one's going to turn out good. I hope so. I mean, it sounds like that case should be dismissed uh, because it sounds like that's that's a better case to go to trial with. You know, right. if it's uh, when people know each other, that's a good case to go to trial with because uh, consent is going to be the issue and her credibility is an issue. And you'll have old videos that they've made and things that she said on right. text messages and things like that. When, when someone is taking a, a video or a photograph of someone that they don't know, then that's when it becomes a problem. Yeah, it, it becomes very problematic. I, I, like you said, when you know someone and you've been with that person for a long period of time, it's, it's kind of hard to say that this person didn't know what was going on. And you, right. You look at the intent as to why the person is saying, I didn't know or they did it without my consent. So I, I think she has a motive Right, because she, she doesn't said. want her boyfriend to right. find out, and she's afraid that even if she gets engaged or gets married, that he could put that on the internet. He could put that on Facebook, and, and she might, you know, she might become a mother pretty soon. And so I can understand her not wanting that video public like that, but to get a, a person convicted of a felony for it. Right. Uh, that's another story altogether. So I guess part of y'all's compromise will have to be that. Uh, you know, y'all both agreed that it'd be destroyed, and so she can... But to use the criminal justice system for that doesn't seem appropriate. We got a caller. Caller, you're on. Thank you for calling Truth and Justice with Vivian King. Hello there, Ms. King. Hey, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm uh, back 100% now. I've been, uh, you know, down for the past couple of weeks, but uh, I'm back uh, 100% now. Oh, I'm so and, glad uh, that you're feeling better, Tracy. And it sounds like, uh, sound like you look nasal there, too. Uh, you know something, too? I am very you sick, know? Tracy. Thank you. When, off air, I'm sniffing and I'm coughing. I'm, uh, I'm, having, I'm having a rough time. This allergy season's been, uh, been uh, hellacious on me. I'm taking medicine uh, morning, noon, and night. Zyrtec well, well, D. Last week, last week I, had, I had to work late, and I wound up missing it last week. But, uh, oh, okay. I missed this week. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for calling, Tracy. So what do you think about... Um, the improper photography video uh, case. Let me, let me say hi to Mr. Carter before I make the comment. Hey, Tracy, and, uh, how are you? Okay. Well, the way I feel about it, I, I think uh, the law is uh, in order. I think anybody that do something like that, they need to be locked up. Cause, you know, it, 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 it just it don't make sense for somebody to do something like that. Uh, and I mean, for the felony, I, uh, I don't know about a felony, but I, I think it should be against the law. For, you know, it, it gives somebody too much power when. And you you gonna uh, capitalize on somebody's vulnerability? That, that, that's not that's not the way you do things. Okay, thank you for your comment, Tracy, and thank you for watching. Okay, thank you. Okay. Bye. Yeah, I, I mean, I understand what you're saying, Tracy, and I agree with you. I'm not sure it should be a felony, and there are different degrees of capitalization on people's videos. So, for example, when they're friends or ex-lovers or lovers, you know, that's one scenario, consensually or not. But if it's a stranger, that's something else. And if it hasn't progressed any further than that, I can see there's some, you know, some sanctions being given. I'm not sure that someone doing something silly like that, because it, it could be considered a prank. Because remember in the days when um, I'm a little bit older than you, Wilvin, when it seemed 
because when I went to college in the 70s, we were pretty prudent, you know, uh, but we definitely wouldn't have had the type of beach parties that they were having in the, I think, 90s when they, the girls would raise their T-shirts up and it would be, uh, you know, show their breasts and it would be videos of that. What do they call it, you, Girls Gone Wild? I don't know about Girls Gone Wild, but you, you're talking about my times when we was going to Freak Nick and whatnot. Freak Nick? I never even heard of that. Oh, man. What's that? Well, Freak Nick was a time when we would go all, it, it used to be called Black College Week. Okay. Um, somehow it turned into Freak Nick, but this is where all the college students would descend upon Atlanta um, during the 90s. It, it started in late 80s and ran all the way through um, like 95, 96. And it was just a big party in the streets. It was drinking, smoking, it was just guys and girls just having fun. And, you know, all we did was take pictures of girls. You know, they would, they would show their breasts. They would, you know, people just having fun, being young kids, college kids. I know. So that's what I think that's why a lot of people get it kind of confused because those girls were raising their shirts over you to take their pictures. Mm -hmm. But they might not have wanted their pictures to be all over social media. You know, they mm -hmm. might have wanted it just to be a weekend in Atlanta and then forgotten about. But unfortunately, you know, I think I've seen that they were selling those videos like uh, Girls Gone Wild mm -hmm. and and things like that, because one of the lawyers in the courthouse, son was, you know, y'all's age, and he was at all those parties, and they would come and show us all these pictures. We were like, oh, my God, that's what college kids do now? So I think that sometimes, somehow, say like someone that's 20-something years old now, in 2013, they'd be a little bit confused, because they grew up in an era where they saw all those videos of, right. you know, just young people going wild. The, the scenario that I have is a guy who said he saw uh, on YouTube where people would pull pranks in the streets where they would follow people and have little ca uh, their cell phones and look up under their dress or look and see what they had. And he's actually, it's called something. I forgot what he told me it was called, but there's some word for it. And I'm sorry that I didn't, re I don't remember it. I have it in his file at my office. But anyway, there's a word for it. And so he thought he'd do it. <laughs> and you know, when you have so many hits on YouTube, he was he told me you can make money off YouTube. Right. So although he has a great job, um, or had a great job, he has a great job and he has a lot of education, he has a couple of degrees, he got into a habit of walking around walking around with people after seeing being stimulated by this he saw on, on YouTube and on the internet, following people if he got close to people because he's a handsome guy, if they're talking to him, and if they turn their back like on an elevator or, or walking or he walked them to their car or something, he would have his camera in case he caught an interesting shot or just butt shots. I mean, they might have on pants. It might just be butt shots. But he thought that there was some, there is some market for that. And um, not that he had sold it or he was going to sell it. He just thought it was kind of interesting. Have but, you ever but, heard of that? I've never heard of that. But, but it's interesting uh, because when you read the indictment, the, the part of the statute that, that, that I find intriguing um, is that you have to do it for sexual gratification or exactly. to arouse. Exactly, and that's another thing I was going to talk to you about because the way he explained it to me, it wasn't for sexual gratification. Right. It was because it's kind of like a fad, kind of like Freak Nick. I mean, you know, like when you see the girls going wild, I'm not sure people are getting sexually gratified because they hit on YouTube or they hit on it and see it, they just look, they're just amazed at what girls are doing. You know, it's kind of like an right. amazement or a fascination, but it doesn't necessarily amount to pornography or a Playboy magazine where you might be masturbating to it or something. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it's, it's kind of different. And so I'm not sure and, and then the intent. When, and when they say to, to put it on YouTube or some type of social media, I guess the issue that I have with it is, if I was going to use it to sexually arouse or gratify myself, I don't need to put it on Facebook. Right. I can just look at it in the confines of my own home. Uh, and like in, in my second case, um, the young lady was she's afraid that he's going to put it on Facebook or whatnot. And but it wasn't even done. Right. It, and they'd he, had a, a, a several year relationship. Right. He never posted it. And it was never posted and, and her I allegation. think it's her fear though as a woman, uh, I'm just thinking that you know, there are things that all women have done, especially if they've gone to college, that they're not uh, happy about or not but you think those are secrets between those lovers, you know, when you marry someone and I think she maybe was afraid that because she's still sneaking and seeing him. Right. And maybe she intended to sneak and see him forever because she liked something that they did together but she didn't want to be blackmailed later or 
I think that's what it, I think that's and that I think that's the issue in your case, and I, I think that's why that case is going to get dismissed. Or that should be your line of cross examination. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? If you go to trial, because she doesn't want she wants to steal because she's clearly going back having sex with her ex boyfriend when she has a fiance. Right, so or talking is, about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, or talking about having sex with right. him uh, when she has a fiance. So she's definitely setting it up had set it up for them to have a future relationship. Or on the flip side, she might have been talking to him about it to get those pictures. And, and she might have been having a sexual conversation with him knowing that, you know, they'd start talking about those videos that they made so that she could get to see if he still had them. Because he could have said, oh, I threw those videos away a long time ago. Or I had a girlfriend that caught him and she, you know, blah, blah, blah. Even though she's flirting with him sexually, trying to see if he's still interested. She's trying to, you know, she could have been trying to find out, does he still have those videos? Let me flirt with him Absolutely. and see. So it could be either one, but still the motivation is so this new boyfriend, fiance, slash future husband uh, doesn't find out. You know, you women are smarter than us. You all try to beat us to the punch. Right. And that, that's what it sounds like to me is, is she wants to save face over here while keeping this concealed over there. So that's, that's what I think it is. Um, but... I don't think it's a felony offense. I don't think it's something you should go to prison for um, in the event that you, if you, even if you want to plead guilty or if, if a jury found you guilty, you should not go to right. prison for this. And I also think that we should consider what the complainant wants and says, in a, especially in an anonymous case, like the one at the grocery store where she's reaching up for the cereal and he takes pictures. Uh, I know that's frightening to women. That would be frightening to me, but I think if I understood that it was a prank or a practical joke, because I guess that one of the parallels I was going to say is that when college kids do it, and they're mainstream college kids, then no one thinks it's any big deal. Right. But it does seem a little bit more sadistic when it's someone, you know, at a grocery store, you're not expecting for somebody to take your picture if you have something under your dress. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I think sometimes in life we try, in this society, we try to legislate too much. And, you know, and I think, I think that the, the other intent for this statue is like the peeping toms. Right. You know, you, you have these phones and you're going by people's houses or you see people doing things and you're photographing those for um, sexual arousal for, you, for yourself. And I think it's also probably targeted uh, for the pedophiles that were going to, that may have been going to uh, parks and looking at kids and using those videos and whatnot. I don't think the intent uh, which we know that in, here in, in Houston, in Harris County, the intent is not always the focus point for the prosecutors, but I, I just, I think when you have two people that have consented to this act and to do right. it on camera, and now you have buyer's remorse, right? you know, it, it's, and you're hoping that this is, this doesn't come out and you think it's about to come out now, I get to file charges, I, I think that's an injustice. I think, I think they're abusing the statute. I agree with you on that one. I think she's got buyer's remorse. I mean, I, I do agree with you on that. But, but I guess the issue becomes, in your case, did she consent? Because I think she's telling the police, I didn't consent Absolutely. to him. We had sex, but I didn't know he had a secret camera filming me on set, having sex with him. And I found that out later. But the, the great part about it is that she is going to be shown to be alive by those uh, text messages that she sent him. Well, on previous occasions. What we're hoping to come out is, is the fact that, um, and, and from my understanding, is that I consented to videos one and two, but not video three. Oh, that's Which, basically her allegation? That's, 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 what, that's what's been floating around. That's what I've heard. And if that's the case, then I, I think she's going to also have a credibility issue oh, a credibility as, issue. as well. Right. Right, it's going to be a credibility issue. That's going to be a case, a scenario that she should agree that if they're all destroyed, just let it go. Right. Because and that, and that's what she I, wants. If I was a woman, I've never consented to anyone taking videos of me but yeah, having sex. But if I did, I don't think I'd want to be in, tr in court saying, oh, yes, uh, excuse me, jury. Uh, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Yes, I was a freak, and I let him tape me twice. But the third time, I said no, or I didn't know about it the third time. Because another thing comes up is implied consent. Right. And if you've let me tape you twice, then I think that I can tape you every time we have sex. Exactly. And so when does it, I mean, I didn't, have, I didn't get you to write a written consent the first two times, so why wouldn't I be able to do it every time? I mean, that's yeah. what kind of girl you are.
Yeah. I don't think that I would want to have a trial like that if I were her. I, I, I would I not. think my intent would be to get it destroyed without suing him civilly like the rich people do. Right. Rich people just sue you civilly. Right. And try to get you in the pocketbook, but poor people use the criminal justice system. That's and unfortunate. unfortunately, we have a criminal justice system that's very eager to uh, put uh, poor people in jail. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm sure your clients are poor just like mine. <laughs> so, um, that's what it, it becomes, a, a situation of, well, it's, uh, it's not our normal topic, but I think it's an interesting topic that, uh, and I think people should know that it is illegal, because we've always known that you're not supposed to eavesdrop, um, that you can record people, audio record people, if they're, if one of the persons uh, is a part of that conversation. So, the law on that is, if I want to tape me and Wilvin's conversation, I don't have to tell him I'm taping him as long as I'm taping him and I'm a part of that conversation. My voice is on that conversation. What I can't do is leave a tape recorder in here and then leave the room and tape who, whoever else he's talking to. That's what's illegal. Uh, and, and make sure people understand that. That's the difference. So I've known of husbands and wives doing things like that, where a husband might leave a a, a tape underneath the bedroom when he has a housewife and uh, she doesn't know he's been taped. I've, I've heard of things like that and uh, it's, uh, it, I've heard lawyers talking about that in family court because uh, it's illegal. But, but you know so it's like I want to use this evidence in court but <laughs> I can't use it in family court because I illegally eavesdrop right. and it's in our statutes. Um, so I think the only people that can do that are law enforcement. So and we know law enforcement does that in the back of their patrol vehicles. All the time. All the time. So, but we can't do that. Um, another thing I think that people need to know about is, I find a lot of times, let's go back to waiving rights. When a person will waive their right, <clears throat> like one of your clients did, they'll waive their rights, and it's two things I want viewers to know. When you waive your right, don't be afraid or embarrassed to exercise your right. In, in other words, if an officer says you have a right to remain silent, and you have a right to have a lawyer present. It's nothing wrong or shameful about having a lawyer present. I've covered this before. Because, remember, law enforcement has prosecutors right there on the phone. They've talked to the prosecutors before they arrest you. They talk to the prosecutors <clears throat> when they take breaks, when you're in, uh, in the custodial room where they're talking to you. And when I say prosecutors, that are their, those are their lawyers. They're telling them, do this, do that, yes, it's legal to do this, yes, you should ask him this, I'm not going to accept charges unless you ask him this, and he says that. So keep in mind that the officer is conferring with the lawyer every step of the way, so you have, and the law, it's only fair to let you know that you have a right to confer. And what that means is, you know, get arrested that night, and once you hire a lawyer, it might be three weeks from now, if you talk to your lawyer about what would happen, then you have a right to ask your lawyer, say, you know, now I want to talk to the prosecutor, if that's what you want to do. But everybody will be represented. The officer will have his lawyer, the prosecutor, and then you will have your lawyer. That's only fair. So never let a, 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 a law enforcement official talk to you and embarrass you into uh, having a, a, a lawyer uh, because they have one. So they're already, they have a leg up on you. Another thing <clears throat> on waiving your rights. If you do waive your rights and talk to a police officer, tell the truth or don't say anything at all. Uh, when you talk to state agents, like a HPD officer, that's cool. But when you talk to a federal officer, it is a federal crime to lie to a federal officer. So why would you waive your right and then lie? I mean, mm -hmm. if you're going to waive your right, tell the truth. Otherwise, wait and talk to a lawyer and tell your lawyer the truth because uh, we have a lot of clients that lie to us, uh, tell your lawyer the truth, and then choose whether or not you want to talk to them with your lawyer so everybody's represented. Do you have any comments about that, Wilbur? Why do you, why, my, mine is more of a question. Um, why do you think clients or our clients do that? Wave I think their they're rights. intimidated. I think we have a lot of good police officers. They go to a lot of continuing education classes. They play a lot of role plays, and they approach people differently. Today I was listening to a statement that a client made in a federal case. And that client um, shouldn't have talked. I mean, just, just tried not to say things, but was kind of lying, you know, just kind of lying. And the, and the agents are being nice enough, the federal agents are saying, well, no, no, don't talk too much, and it's okay to wait and talk to us after you get a lawyer. Because the agents were, all, I mean, were actually being nice. They actually didn't, just didn't want them to lie because it was a, it's a case of wiretaps, surveillance, it's good policing, 
wiretap, so they listen to the conversations, surveillance where they're watching the people, and GPS navigation. Mm -hmm. So they have it all. So they know exactly who's where, who's on the phone, and they're watching people go in and out of these locations. So you can't lie to them, I mean, you can lie to them, but why lie? Because, you know, you're lying to them, and they know you're lying. And so these are agents who are actually being nice by not telling them they have all this stuff, but saying, um, no, no, don't, don't even say anything. You know, just kind of stop going along those lines because we kind of, we already know you did this, 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 and this because we saw this. So th th don't really say that. If you're not really ready to talk, and, and we understand you don't know us very well right now, you don't feel comfortable, just stop. So I actually thought that was kind of interesting because it, I had never, it's a, it's a case of McAllen, and I and our, our DEA agents usually are not that nice. They let you right. go ahead and lie. It's, it's, it's just weird because I tell my clients, it's rare that I catch my clients before they go and speak with law enforcement and and and, and even in this particular case uh, well my second case with the video recording um, it's not so much of a as a as a um, speaking to police but they came to his house to execute a warrant and he called me and I've had this happen several times my clients will call me on my cell phone and say hey mr. Carter I have this situation here and the police either want to talk to me, they want to do a search, and I tell them, if they don't have a warrant, don't do it. And they be afraid, scared to death. You have the right to say no or present, have them to present a warrant. And they're terrified, and it's not un until I tell them over and over again, do not say anything, do not allow them in your house, do not allow them to search your cars. And I think we, uh, and like you're doing now, is we, we need to continue to educate the poor people because the rich people know how to invoke their rights. <laughs> the and rich they stand people by. Do. Rich people know how to invoke their rights. And, and our people, the poor people, they don't understand that the, the law is to uh, protect you as well as the rich. And I, I think that's very important for our clients to know. And um, my client in this particular case, he just was a little, uh, he was a little heady. And he understood, or, or I should even say he's probably more scared than anything. And he confides in me for everything, and so he calls. Anything of question, he calls. And I say, if you have an attorney, you know Ms. King, me, or whoever, you should call um, your attorney if you can and, and, and seek legal advice before you speak or allow any type of searches to go forward. Because everything um, that the officers are telling you or trying to convince you to say or to do, you may not even have broken the law. They may not even know you have broken the law. If you have, they're just trying to trap you. Exactly. And um, and they're know. and they're good at it. They're trained yeah. to do that. They're trained in interrogation techniques. And usually, what I find, the officers are so nice to you sometimes that people just kind of their comfort zone. They just get real relaxed, and that's that's a good technique. That the, the nice technique is a good one. Then there's that threatening technique. What they do to a lot of street people. And I mean street people, like uh, people in the game, young, you know, have houses, but they're out in the game, don't work. The game they play with them is they know that those guys are always going to have several women who have children by them. So they got several baby mm -hmm. mamas. And so they'll tell them, we're going to take your baby mama's kids from them if you don't, say, if you don't talk to us. But then off, that's illegal for the officers to say that. Mm -hmm. And so they will never admit that they say that. And that will not be on a tape. So if you ever have so, an officer tell you they're going to take your, ki your baby mama kids, say OK. And just invoke your right to remain silent. Because you still have a right to talk later when you, you've consulted with the lawyer, just like the police officer has consulted with his lawyer, the prosecutor. Just always remember that when they're talking to you, they are const the officers are constantly consulting their lawyers, which are the prosecutors. I'll tell you something that's even more important. What's that? If you're already arrested, you're arrested. They're not going to let you They're go. They're not going to let you go. <laughs> you, you're there. Right. So the only conversation you need to have now is call my lawyer and call someone to bond you out. Other right. than that, you're there. Or take me to my permanent cell for the night. That's it. You can't get out. So talking. But see, the thing is, and this is another thing law enforcement is good at. They, they know what they're doing. Most people, especially the people in the dope game or anywhere, people, working people, they're used to talking their way out of things. Right. We're used to negotiating things. You know, we're used to talking. One of the worst DWI videos I've ever seen where a person is so incriminating was a lawyer's video. A lawyer got arrested, a well-known lawyer, he's mm -hmm. not around now so you don't know him, but a well-known lawyer, he talked so much on that video, it showed how drunk he was, he just kept saying crazy things because lawyers talk for a living. 
So it's hard for lawyers not to talk, even sure. though he was a, crim a well-known criminal lawyer. But it was the worst video. He talked, talked, talked. And he, he was slurring. He was drunk. I mean, it was just he couldn't say he wasn't drunk because he talked too much. Amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing how many people um, talk to police officers. And it's okay if you want to talk to them. Just don't expect that we can throw that out because that's a voluntary statement. You right. can't throw it out. So just at least know the law on it. It's okay if you want to talk to them. It's okay if you want to talk and know that they have lawyers and you don't. Um, but just don't think that it can be thrown out because it cannot. Because if you open your mouth and talk, that's voluntary. And don't write nothing down. And, oh, it's, and don't, don't sign anything right, that someone else wrote. Anything, right. Well, don't sign anything that someone else wrote. The, right. the worst written confessions I hate are when the police officers type it and you just write it and then you sign it and then you tell your lawyer, oh, I didn't know it said that. I didn't read that. Right. No, you don't have to sign. You don't have to sign anything. They can't do anything to you. You're already in custody. You're already arrested, like Wilman said. Now, but sometimes officers do bring you in. Let's talk about this other scenario, though, so we don't, it's not misleading. Officers will bring you in for an investigation, and then you're not technically in custody. They don't have to read you your Miranda rights because they're going to let you go. But they know that they're going to turn around and issue a warrant for you tomorrow. Right. So that's another tactic. You they ask you to come in voluntarily, or they might even pick you up and bring you in voluntarily, and they tell you we're not ch filing charges on you right now. Now, in those scenarios... Technically, they don't have to Mirandize you. I think they do because you're, you, you're not free to go, but their position is that since you came voluntarily because they called you and you came, you knew you walked in the door, even though that once they lock those police doors, you don't feel like you're free to leave. They tell you you are. So the bottom line is it's just never good to talk to a police <laughs> officer without a lawyer. And I understand why people do it. They don't have money to hire a lawyer. So even to hire, you know, even to... To, to have a lawyer, you have to pay them to go with you, and most people just don't have money sitting around for a lawyer. But trust me, what's about to come down, you don't have money for that either. Uh, because usually when a lawyer, uh, when police officers are on your tail, they're not going to let you go yeah. that easily. Just be quiet, please. Just don't say just nothing, don't sign anything. Just be quiet and deal with anything. it later. Right, yeah. just be quiet and don't sign anything. And don't consent to people searching your house and your car. Well, um, I hope that, I mean, we have about 10 minutes left. I hope that what we've said has been uh, slightly enlightening. I know there's not a lot of uh, cases like this out there that you've heard of, but there are some people's lives being devastated by by being arrested, not knowing that playing these little pranks, if you think that's a prank, putting a camera or a cell phone underneath somebody's dress while they're walking uh, is a prank. Know that if you're caught, and another way you can be caught, uh, I've known of someone being caught uh, because all of these businesses now have uh, cameras. So if it's a say like a big office building downtown that you might be working at and you're doing it and you think nobody's looking. A lot of these elevators have cameras now. The garages have cameras now. The outside of the buildings have cameras now. So I've known of someone being caught doing this and charged based on what was on a, a video surveillance. Mm. And the surveillance, it, it was a big enough building to where the surveillance was actually manned by uh, officers. Mm. Kind of like loss prevention at, mm -hmm. you know, at a Walmart, mm -hmm. where they have the cameras out and they're actually in a central control room and they're actually looking out at the, at the person videoing people on elevators. I've known of a case like that. So be very careful of what you do with these cell phones. We can do so much with them, but a lot of it is illegal. So... That's another interesting thing. And one of the, uh, we want to close, uh, oh, we have a phone call. Thank you for calling Truth and Justice with Vivian King. Uh, yes, are there any cases where it's not this egregious thing, photographing under a dress, but just, uh, you know, something not obviously egregious? I don't like it, Uh Not, you say it's more egregious or less egregious? Oh, I think, did you hang up already? Did you understand it? I, I, I could barely hear him. I didn't hear the question. We didn't understand if you said more egregious or less egregious than looking under a dress. We, we, if you didn't watch earlier, we talked about um, a situation where there's actually sexual videos uh, being taken of a man and a woman. And when she found out, she, her allegations, when she found out about the videos, uh, she reported it to the police because she said that he took pictures of them <clears throat> having sex without her consent. But the man said that they were doing it together. I mean, she knew about it. She just didn't want it out. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, I don't know how egregious that really is. Uh, the, 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 the one case I'm familiar with, I've looked at some of the videos uh, up under the lady's dress, and although it, it was a violation of privacy, I mean, they did have underwear on or have clothes on, so I mean, you don't see any sexual parts. So I'm not sure if, if you go to trial in a situation like that, if you'd be able to prove that he was trying to sexually gratify himself, right. because I didn't see any private parts. I mean, I saw the area that's covered by private parts, like covered by your panties, right. but I didn't see any, I didn't see a vagina or pubic hair or anything like that. I didn't see that. Now, I haven't looked at everything on it, but I have, I've looked at a lot. And, and I know just looking at the statute, if, if the caller was asking if, if, if video recording versus photography, if one is more egregious than the other, I mean, the statute's plain and on its face, it doesn't matter. Whether you, you're looking on the address, or you video uh, recording, it's still going to be a state jail felony. You're still looking right. at 180 Let me read days the to two years. It. it said a person commits an offense of improper photography or visual recording um, if the person photographs or by video or other electronic means records, broadcasts, or transmits a visual image of another at a location that is not a bathroom or a private dressing room without the other person's consent and with intent to arouse or gratify the sexual desire of any person. And then it says photographs or by videotape or other electronic mean records, broadcasts, or transmits a visual image of another at a location that is a bathroom or a private place without the person's consent and with intent to invade the privacy of the other or arouse or gratify the sexual desire or another, or knowing the character and content of the photo recording broadcast transmission promotes a photograph recording broadcast or transmission described in those above, those sections above. So it's basically saying, if as long as it's in a place other than a bathroom, but even there, it has to be, it has to be an invasion of privacy. I wonder why they separated this and they don't make one offense more egregious than the other. Um, but anyway, yeah, it can be any electronic means. So that's, they're basically saying, I guess they're keeping it open in case some other medium is created. Right. Because we keep getting different mediums created. So it's a state jail's felony. And they say for purposes of this section, signs posted indicating that a person is being photographed or that a visual image of the person is being recorded, broadcast, or transmis transmitted is not sufficient to establish the person's consent under this subdivision. So you can't put up a sign in a bathroom saying you're being recorded, and that's okay. So it's interesting. It's just an interesting offense. I hadn't heard of it. It actually became law in 2000, September 1, 2001, amended in 2003 and amended again in 2007. So it's actually been on the books a lot, but I've only heard of it this year, maybe last mm -hmm. year, 2012. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first time you'd ever heard of it? Uh, 2011. 2011. So it hasn't been used very much, so I guess law enforcement hadn't been, uh, hadn't been educated about it. But the, the bottom line is you can't take people's pictures without their consent with the intent to sexually gratify yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. And like I said, I still have a question with how they would prove that. Because I think of it, like I said, with those <laughs> girls going wild when they raise their dresses up because the guys are looking at it and having a good time. Are they sexually gratifying themselves or are they just uh, being uh, wild? I, I don't know. And, and they're going to have to, do, uh, the, the <laughs> state prosecutors are going to have to make it a, abundantly clear what you mean by sexually gratifying arouse. I mean, because someone can just be, you know, you go to the movies to see strip tees and those, those type movies and, you know, you're not in there. Sexually gratifying sexually, yourself. Right, exactly. So. I know. It's, it's kind of weird about adding that sexual gratification to it. I'm, I, don't, I don't quite understand that. And, and what if you're doing it, let's say in my case, let's just say in my case you were doing it, uh, or my client, if, allegedly if he, if he was doing or speaking with the uh, complainant, he said, I'm going to put it out to be low down. Right, just I mean, to be mean to you. Right, just to be mean. I mean, there's no sexual gratification or arousal in that particular case. So but I, was I don't it sexual even... arousal and gratification when he took it, though? I mean, when he actually 
had this secret recording videoed because I guess the thought is if he's recording them having sex with each other, right? Then if he looks at it again, it's to sexually gratify himself. But it, it's the recording that's supposed to be to sexually gratify yourself. But you, but see, the thing that's weird about that is you're not looking at the recording exactly. while you're doing it. You're you're one exactly. of the people in the recording. I, I don't think it gets any more gratifying than being a participant. <laughs> being a participant right. versus a watch recording. Right. And so I wonder if there's some glitch, like in your case, if if the guy has a recording somewhere, and he's and he's a part of the movie, the sexual movie that he's making, this porno flick basically that he's making. Mm -hmm. I mean, how? Uh, I don't know if they can prove that he's doing that to gratify himself because he's not. Right. He's not. I can see it if he's if he's a peeping tom and he's he has a recording and he's actually looking at it. Right. While two people are having sex, I can see that being with intent to gratify himself, but not if he's the participant. Exactly. So anyway, it's it's, it's an interesting statute, and I'm sure it's going to be picked apart the more it's used. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way statutes get. Uh, nullified usually is by someone uh, either saying it's overbroad or challenging the constitutionality of the statute. And this hasn't happened with this statute yet as far as my research uh, today uh, to present this tonight. It, hadn't been, it hasn't been challenged because there haven't been many cases like this. Right. So it's an, it's an unusual statute. So um, anyway, um, I guess we don't have any other calls. It's, it's wrap-up time. So you have two minutes. You can uh, summarize what we've said or say <laughs> anything else that you want to say to our listening audience, uh, even about jury service, uh, if, if you like. My, my thing is that I, what I would like to say to, to your audience is simple. Uh, if you don't know your rights, uh, you should consult the lawyer. If you, if you do not have a lawyer to consult, you should then... Um, utilize and invoke your rights once the officers have told you what your rights are. Don't be afraid to say, no, I don't want to speak to you now. No, I don't want to consent to the search. Um, invoke your right and stand by it because the worst thing that can happen is that you be arrested. And once you're arrested, you don't want to incriminate yourself by giving statements or signing statements or allowing somebody to come into your house and planting drugs, not planting, but finding drugs or weapons or anything illegal. Uh, with regards to jury service, um, we as poor people, uh, people of color especially, we need to start, you know, standing by our juries, uh, our, our verdicts, our, how we feel about a case. We need to stop saying, well, I'm gonna go along with the other 10 jurors because they say he's guilty. If you believe in your heart that someone's not guilty, you stand by it, um, stand by your convictions, because um, that's all we have. Uh, our clients, when they say they want to go to trials because they believe in the system, and the system is failing us um, on a daily basis. Uh, we get lucky and we win cases that a lot of people think we shouldn't win, but that's because we had strong jurors. Uh, but a lot of other people are in trial and their jurors are just going along uh, with the flow and they're not standing by their convictions, they're not standing by their true verdicts and people are going to prison because um, they're not taking their jury service uh, either either serious enough or they're afraid to go against uh, the jurors. So I'm, my, my, my position is we need to learn and understand jury service. We need to stop getting off of jury service uh, because a lot of our people, uh, when I say people, poor people of all colors, um, are, are We're being, getting the signal from the director to wrap it up. So. Wrap it up. And the bottom line is, invoke your rights, go to jury service, don't get out of jury service, and, and stand by your convictions. Thank you for watching another episode of Truth and Justice with Vivian King. I hope it was enlightening. Please know that I want to tell your story. So get in touch with me. Uh, the credits will roll, and you'll see my website, my phone number. And if you have an interesting criminal story to tell, please contact me. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for tuning in again tonight. Tonight we have something really good. Hot topic of news this week. This is a show where I try to educate.